Hi everyone, this is all found with another informative video. I just got back from a trip and unfortunately there is an issue with the advances. It has to do with the ABS, the anti-lock braking system. I noticed that at times on the braking, the brake pedal would pulsate for no good reason and eventually the ABS light will come on on the instrument cluster. So in this video we're going to try to troubleshoot to find out the possible cause I'm suspecting dirty wheel speed sensors up front because I noticed a lot of brake dust on the front wheels. So in this video we're going to be replacing the front brake pads and also cleaning the wheel speed sensors. So follow me along. So as we can see on here, we have just three lights on. The light to the left, the red one, is for the parking brake. The green to the right, that's the economy light and then we have the ABS light. Our first line of attack will be to check for codes stored because once you have a light illuminated on the dashboard you're likely going to have some diagnostic codes stored in the vehicle computer. Unfortunately my scan tool cannot communicate with this vehicle being in 1998 so I'm going to use the very primitive method of a metal paper clip into the OBD port. Here's the clip I'll be using for the diagnosis of the ABS. By the way, if you don't understand what ABS actually does, I found a very useful video. I'll link it in the description below. Also, there is a web page that explains how to carry out diagnosis on Toyota's using the paper clip. I'll also link that in the description below. For this car, the OBD port is behind the this compartment. So I'm going to pull out, pull this out gently. Yeah, once that's out. If I look in there. Yeah. That. Yeah. So that white adapter is the OBD2 port. So, based on the description, I'll be jumping terminals 4 and 13. So let me do that right now. Yeah, so the paper clip is in now, fully seated. So next, we move over to the instrument cluster. This diagnostic procedure covers three systems in the car: the supplementary restraint system or the airbag, and then the check engine light and the ABS. So obviously, we didn't have any issues with the SRS or airbag, and also the check engine light. We had no check engine light. So our primary focus will be on the ABS light. So according to the procedure, long flashes represent the first digit and then short flashes will represent the second digit. So let's read it together. One, two, three. Those were long flashes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's it. That's six. One, Two, three. Those are long flashes. One, two, three. Okay, that was a test two. So the flashes would continue sequentially and then repeat all over. So I can see codes 32, 34, and 36. So we'll get back to the web page I told you about and then find out exactly what those codes mean. Once you're done verifying the codes, Go ahead to turn the ignition off and then remove the paper clip. So after checking on the web page, codes 32 and 34 pointed to faults in the front left wheel speed sensor and rear left wheel speed sensors respectively. I wasn't able to find any description for code 36. So moving ahead, I think since we have faults for various wheel speed sensors, it's likely, as I suspected, that some of them are providing the computer with wrong readings and then the computer thinks other sensors are also at fault and all that. Because all the wheel speed sensors provide constant information about how fast the wheels are turning to the computer and then the computer has to make that information, has to use the information to decide what's going on with the car. So we'll proceed to 
take out the brake pads and then also clean the wheel speed sensors on the front before taking the antenna parts. Ensure that all your tires are matching because that could as well be a major cause of ABS issues. So in my case, my wheels are 19560R15 all round. Next, we proceed to remove the front wheel, support the vehicle on the jack stand, and then turn the wheel all the way to the left. So here we have the brake cover. So we're going to be taking out two bolts, one up here and the other one down here. They are both 7mm hex bolts. Caliper bolts loosened. I'll be taking out the clip in front of the assembly. And then gently move the caliper off the brake disc. I need some gentle persuasion. Yeah, so that's it. So, inspecting, we can hang this up here so that it doesn't hang by the brake line. Looking at the brake pads, we can tell, I could tell that the pads were in really bad shape because it made a lot of noise under hard braking. So, it's definitely a good thing we're getting this replaced now. Yeah, these pads are done. Almost gets into the metal. So next we're going to retract the caliper piston. So I'll be using a C-clamp and the old pads. So with the pads in place temporarily and using the setup, I'll use the C-clamp and then as I tighten the C-clamp, the piston will be retracted as you can see here. It should retract smoothly without any binding. You can crack open the master cylinder reservoir so that it goes in easier. Also, ensure that brake fluid doesn't overflow out of the master reservoir. If you haven't filled or topped off your brake fluid, that should not happen. So you can see it's almost fully in. It's moving really smoothly. You definitely know once it's at the end. I'm not applying much force at all. I'm backing out because my C clamp is missing a fitting. Yeah. So I think it's fully in right now. So I'm back. Back this off. And then take out our brake pads. Be very careful so you don't damage the boot on the brake caliper. Also check for cracks in the boot and leaks. This one looks pretty good. So right now the piston is fully retracted and ready to have new brake pads. So we hang that back up there so that we don't rest it on the brake line or brake hose. So next we're going to clean up the carrier assembly, all the brake dust. And then using a silicone based grease, we're going to grease up the new pads, assemble the piston and then we move on to the wheel speed sensor. access the wheel speed sensor because it's at the back of the rotor on the other side of the caliper assembly. I'm going to be turning the wheel all the way to the right. So after doing that, using a ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket, taking off the wheel speed sensor. So here we have the wheel speed sensor for the left front wheel. It doesn't look so dirty. So 
So I'm guessing it's probably faulty, but I'm still gonna give it some cleaning. I can see some metal filings because it's magnetic. I think it's a Hall effect sensor. I'm not very sure. Someone should leave a comment below on what kind of sensor it is. So I'm gonna wipe that down so that we're sure it's squeaky clean. So I think right now it's clean enough. So I'm going to reassemble it back. Be careful not to over tighten the 10mm bolt because you could easily snap off the head. <laughs> Ask me how I know that. <laughs> Close up of the wheel speed sensor. Yeah, and that's the bolt in it. So that's why it fits. So with the wheel speed sensor cleaned and also the brake pads replaced we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side and then don't forget to pump the brakes because if we look closely now at the pods they're not in contact they're not in contact with the brake disc at all there's a gap right there if you can see that so we need the brake caliper piston to come out a bit so I can make contact with the brake rotor or disc. So before you move the vehicle at all, like I said, remember to pump the brakes so you have good brakes. And then see how it goes. So I'll let you know how this goes in the next video unfailingly. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it share with your loved ones and friends and also subscribe to my channel so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video in the next in my next video it's gonna be a very interesting one and you don't want to miss it thanks for watching have a nice day